Some curious young adults asked me what socialism is the other day and why I'm a socialist. So this is what I told them. I said, every human society ever is reliant upon and based around human labor. We as humans use our mind and our bodies to interact with the environment, the world around us. And this human activity, labor, is what produces the things we need to survive. Things like shelter, the house I'm in, was created by labor. Same with these shoes and my color-changing Lil Uzi Vert lamp. Everything around us today is produced by human labor, and this has been true forever for all of human society. A caveman in prehistoric societies picking an apple off of a tree is an act of labor. The caveman is using labor to interact with the environment and produce the things that he and his society needs to survive, food and apple. As time passes, the caveman society may learn agricultural techniques and plant giant apple farms so they can produce more. But that's still an act of human labor, it's just that technology has advanced, increasing labor's productivity, and it's been organized differently. So now that we know that all human societies produce using labor and organize labor a certain way, let's look at capitalism. Under capitalism, the people who provide the labor, the majority of society, have no say in production or the distribution of what their labor produces. All those decisions are made by a capitalist who doesn't actually produce with labor himself. Therefore, production becomes organized and carried out for the enrichment of the capitalist, not for the good of society. The purpose of production in this system is to produce surplus value and profit for a capitalist, not producing things based on how useful they would be to society, and not organizing production in a way that's beneficial to the workers, the mass of society, but rather organizing production in a way that maximizes the exploitation of the workers. Because more labor from the workers equals more profit for the capitalist. And there are some horrific contradictions that stem from the fact that production is organized to create surplus value, not for what people need. There are more empty houses in the U.S. than there are homeless people. But if you can't pay for your house and the profit of the landlord who owns your house, you don't get to live in a house. Because we don't produce houses for the useful value that they have, giving humans shelter. We build houses so landlords and real estate oligarchs can make a profit. So if they own all the houses and there are people living on the streets, they don't care. They only care about their profit. Do you see the contradiction here? So that's basically part one of me telling these kids why I'm a socialist. They were all pretty interested, but I don't know. Do you think that was a good explanation? Bad? Too complicated? They said it made sense. They said it made a lot of sense. I will explain part two after I go get a smoothie. Recently, some people with no knowledge of socialism asked me why I'm a socialist and what socialism is. And this is part two of what I told them. In part one, we said that all human societies are reliant on human labor and they all organize labor a certain way. So the next question these folks asked me was, how would socialism come about? How would society change the way that we organize labor? So what I said to them, the way that every society organizes labor and production create certain relations of production, relations between people involved in production. Under feudalism, a different economic system than capitalism with different relations of production, a class of peasants would work the land that belonged to the king or to the church. The peasants would grow what they needed to survive and then the surplus would go to the feudal lord who owned the land they were working. And these were the primary relations of production. And this leads to what we call class antagonisms and class struggle. Because the class which works the land is constantly being exploited and suppressed by the class which owns the land, it is in the direct interest of the workers to struggle against the ruling class. Class struggle. A struggle for political and economic control between the classes due to the relation that they have to one another. And eventually, after a lot of historical development and due to many different factors, class struggle hits its breaking point. The ruling class is overthrown and what follows is massive economic and political reorganization. The French Revolution allowed a class that had been historically developing for years to take economic power over the church and the feudal lords. That class was the bourgeoisie, largely made up of merchants and people who own manufacturing guilds. And the political system reflected this. It was made to protect the bourgeoisie's right to private property. And this came about through class struggle between the peasants and the feudal lords and also 
also the merchants and the feudal lords. So historically, all societies have been reorganized due to class struggle like this. The Civil War in the US is a great example of class struggle. It ended the mode of production that was slavery. Class struggle between the slaves and the plantation owners and between the northern capitalists and the plantation owners. So if all societies have relations of production which lead to class antagonisms and class struggle, Capitalism is no different. The class antagonism in capitalism is, of course, between the capitalists and the working class, so the class struggle of the workers will eventually lead to the overthrow of the capitalists, which will lead to a reorganization of society. Socialism. And the working class, which takes power, can eventually bring about the abolition of classes in general. Communism. So, that's what I told these people who asked me what socialism is. What do you think? Too complicated? Too simple? Too long? Eddie, shut up. Let me know in the comments. I want to hear it.